Okay, so unfortunately we weren't able to pick up a lot of fuel at this airstrip, mainly because it's a private airstrip and they gave us what they had spare, but it isn't a great deal. And so we're going to attempt to get across to Derby Field, which is about 50 or so miles away from here and uh, land there and thoroughly refuel. I'm not sure how well we will manage however because uh, we really are very light on fuel at the moment and this plane tends to cut out when you've got about a gallon of fuel in each tank so we might be all right and what we've done is added a further four gallons of fuel to the, uh, the total and uh, we must just hope that that will, that will get us there. Anyway, we seem to be, uh, we seem to be on course, we just reset our altimeter, there we are, that's accurate. And um, in a second we'll do a quick course correction and we will be on our way. Still a beautiful day. I wonder what further adventures we might have. Of course, if we do happen to f upon a, a regular gas station along the way, we will uh, we will certainly take advantage of it. Just checking that the flaps are up properly. So basically we're flying due west from here and uh, this should take us over the lake and towards our destination well, we're, and we're certain to get over the lake whether we'll reach our destination or not I'm unsure so you may find that we have to do an emergency landing we will just have to see I'm beginning to regret now that when I took off earlier in the day that I didn't simply go back to Stead and refuel there which would have been the most sensible thing to do but well it is what it is so we must do what we do okay, we're a little bit south of where we want to be one of the best things you can do for VFR flying is simply find somewhere on the horizon which matches your course and steer towards that. It's often better than simply staring at the compass all the time. Said. We will correct this course slightly. Okay, so if we aim for that little notch between the two mountains on the skyline, that should take us pretty much in the direction where we want to be. This would be sort of great bush flying territory for impromptu landings were it not for the fact that we're low on fuel and 
we really do need to get on. I checked some places where it was possible to get fuel and most of them took me back over into California. There was even one that was at a seaplane base, which was right in the middle of a lake. So I didn't think that was a very good idea for this aircraft, even though it's got big fat tyres on it. And I don't think even they would keep this afloat. Anyway, we seem to be managing all right, although of course we've got the warning light on about fuel levels. scenery here is absolutely spectacular. We're not flying in the golden hour, this is about midday. Now, if we had a plane with autopilot, we could do something like read a book now. But in this aircraft, it all has to be done by hand. So we better keep our hands on the joystick. I'd have to fly over this lake and here we are doing so. With a fuel tank, full tank of fuel, this aircraft's got a range of about only about 400 miles, nautical miles that is, so we're likely to have to make a number of fuel stops on the way. It's good we're pretty much over well, we're not quite over dry land yet but our engine cut now I'm sure we could glide there so not that it's going to cut out quite yet Anyway, it's a salutary lesson. That we need to pick our destination so that we can actually pick up enough fuel to make the range that we need. Of course, Trent Palmer would never make a mistake like this. 
Matt Jonas Panchinko Might. He seems to be the expert at doing wild things, and though he is pretty safe, really. Although he likes to portray himself as a wild man. Jonas is the inventor of the super wide lawnmower, which consists of his ride on plus two push along lawnmowers welded to a front bar. He doesn't think it works very well. It's the sort of thing my father would have invented, and he would have agreed it didn't work very well as well. But who am I to comment? I'm just flying a computer. Well, we're doing quite well here. And as you can see, this navigation towards the notch in the, in the mountain is also working for us because we've still got a steady easterly course on the compass and we wouldn't have had that if we'd been staring at the compass all the time. So that's certainly the way to do things. Just keep your nose pointed at a target and eventually, if you don't run out of fuel, you'll get there. Well hopefully you'll get there anyway. So when we get up here a little bit further towards this notch, we will check our course again. And see if we can create another landmark for ourselves to follow. I suspect it might be something like there's a hill just about to go be below the, the left hand strut. Right on our nose there's a lower peak and there's also behind it a sort of slightly darkened peak so we're gonna we're gonna just head in that direction now All the time we've been doing this, our altitude's been creeping up, which is quite good really because it gives us a long glide down. Once we're close to our destination, 
given that we lack fuel, that may not be such a bad thing. Really majestic up here. Well, four gallons of fuel left in the right hand tank, so that promises quite well. Got nothing in the left hand tank. Of course, of that four gallons, we can probably only use three, so... We don't want to get lost on the way, as we did when we headed up to the last airport. There is no margin for error on this trip. Yesterday I was experimenting with some new views from the fixed camera on the aircraft and it was quite interesting. The controls were somewhat erratic, which would be alright if we were in a situation where we had plenty of fuel. I could experiment with them a little. But when you pause this aircraft for some reason, it's just the aircraft pauses, but everything else continues as normal. So time still passes, including, I believe, the consumption of fuel. So we really don't want to be having to experiment and correct things in the pause situation because we could still run out of fuel which would be pretty catastrophic at the end of flying for an hour or so.
no one in their right mind really would be flying around in this area with only three gallons of fuel unless they knew that <coughs> two miles away they could land and at least get half full again but this is the world of flight sims so we're allowed to do these kind of dangerous things
once again we're not using any airport markers so we're going to have to find this airport simply by uh, looking for it. I'm pleased to say we're I think pretty much on course so that's quite a good thing. We've completed the majority of our journey so we should be seeing some urban settlements soon. Hopefully we'll be able to locate the airport. Anyway, we're going on a little bit further. Still a very majestic country. It's one of the things with this. You can spend all your time fixated upon the instruments, but really it's a sim where you benefit from looking around a great deal and learning how to explore the world virtually. got a little fuel left which is very good news this is either a highway or a railway line to our right, I'm not sure which. And I'm not going to look at finding out for the moment. But it is quite reassuring because it's clearly heading in the direction where we're going. I'm cheating of course because I've put everything in as clear sky so we can see everywhere but imagine trying to navigate this simply using instruments flying under a thick cloud plus all the pressure of having insufficient fuel when you think about how the early pilots, maybe the ones from the postal service, used to fly around in all weathers in planes that were more primitive than this one. It's no wonder that so many of them got killed. beginning to open up and this is of course why there is a, a town in the area suddenly the soil becomes fertile again and it's possible to harvest crops from it I'm just going to do a slight course correction 
maybe to move us a bit more parallel to these fields. I think that will take us more in the direction that we want to be going. heading for the far side of these mountains so anyway we just glide for a little bit lose a little bit of altitude now doing this partly to save fuel and partly so that we can see better for when we uh, finally do locate the airport which I suspect is going to be over towards where those buildings are at the foot of the mountain or maybe off to the right no I don't think so we're looking for a tarmac runway. We'll probably not use it, we'll probably land on the grass if we can, to save our tyres. One good thing, even if we do run out of fuel now, and probably land in a field and somewhere here we'll be able to get some more gas. Now, of course, if we were real pilots, by now we would be in touch with the uh, airport by radio.
one thing to remember is if you come from England, the fields are a lot smaller, so you might think that you're quite close to the ground here and these fields are therefore just a few hundred feet beneath you, but actually there's still a fair way up in the sky because American fields can be quite enormous. I could see this airfield. Hmm. That looks like something beneath us. This is not very good airport procedure. But then we're bush flyers, not regular airport goers. I must learn how to do all these things properly sometime. This is a, a runway that's not in use, you can see the cross on it. And the one with the marker on the end, that's the one that we're supposed to use. Runway, runway 12. One, two. That will be good. No, we won't. We'll land on the grass just for the hell of it. Here's an airport where we can certainly get some fuel. So the next leg of our trip should be far easier. 
because we won't have that worry about falling from the sky. And also give us an opportunity to review our course and see how much progress we're actually making on this trip in this very slow but very pleasant aircraft. 